Hi second graders! So this is Shannon Anderson. I am a third grade teacher over at Van and also a children's book author. So um, I was asked to create a little video for you to talk a little bit about being an author and a little bit about my books and why I love writing so much. So I hope a lot of you like writing too. Um, I actually have liked writing since I was little and I won my first ever writing contest when I was in elementary school in fifth grade and I saved my book from that. It's called Oops! And I remember I won an autographed copy of Jamie Gilson's Can't Catch Me, I'm the Gingerbread Man for writing that story. And that always stuck with me and always made me feel special and that someone liked my writing. Um, and I hope that you have people too that you share your writing with and that um, they will tell you the things that they love about your writing. So I decided when I was in high school that it would be really cool to be a teacher but also to write children's books. And I actually wrote that down in my high school scrapbook. And um, I always wanted to do it. And when I was in high school, actually, my job was at the public library. So back when I was in high school, the public library had an upstairs and a downstairs. So the upstairs was all of the adult section and the downstairs was all of the children's section. And the children's librarian left every day at four o'clock. And so when I was done with school, I would come in at four and I would stay until they closed at eight. So I was the children's librarian basically from four to eight the whole evening. And I just fell in love with children's books all over again. I mean, I loved them as a kid, but then I got to work with them and I got to match kids with books and help them find books that I thought they would enjoy. And it was just the best job ever. So when I got into college, I did take some writing courses, but mostly I took classes to become a teacher. And then when I got out of school, I got my first teaching job. I actually used to teach first grade for a really long time. And I really wanted to do the whole writing thing, but it turns out teachers are pretty busy. And so on the weekends, I was at school planning. And in the summers, I had to have extra jobs to be able to, you know, afford to live. And so it was a long time before I finally got to pursue my dream to write books for kids. And what happened was I wrote a grant so that I could possibly go attend some writing conferences. And I wrote the grant and I, I won the grant. And so I got to go to St. Simon Island in Georgia for a week. And I got to go to Los Angeles, California for a week and learn a whole bunch about writing and about the children's book industry and about the business of writing. And that kind of launched me on my way. So from there, I was you know, I had some of the basics down, and so then I decided the next step was to maybe take some online writing courses. So I took some children's writing courses, and from there I just kind of started submitting things. So I started out really easy and doing magazines. So if you've ever heard of Highlights Magazine, um, I wrote an article about how to teach your dog to jump through a hoop. And we taught our dog Lucy one weekend how to jump through a hula hoop. So if I held up the hula hoop and I said jump, Lucy would jump right through. And I wrote down all the steps. I, I did it as a how-to writing. So um, I sent it into Highlights Magazine and they ended up putting it in their magazine. It was the feature cover article. So that was pretty cool. Um, but still no books. So I also sent a story that I had written for um, Chicken Soup for the Soul. And so that's a book that has 101 stories in it from all different authors. And they ended up taking my story, A Deed a Day, which is a story about doing a good deed every day. And it was something based on what my family did for a whole year. Um, we did a good deed a day and we wrote them down in something called a deed diary. And um, it was a great experience. And then being able to share that story in the book was great too. I actually have that one right here. So. In Chicken Soup for the Soul, Find Your Happiness, my story is in there. And then what's really neat is the Chicken Soup for the Soul people liked the story and they ended up putting it in another book that was raising kids with good values. And then they ended up putting it in another book, Simply Happy. So just my one little story ended up making it into three books because they really liked the message in the story. And then from there, I actually was contacted by a man that was working on a book about kindness and he said he had read my story in one of the Chicken Soup for the Soul books and he wanted me to write a story just for his book called You Can Never Go Wrong by Being Kind. And so I sent him a story about a project that I do with my classroom every year and it's the Kindness Project and I wrote it up for him and he liked it and put it in that book. So 
those were some little publications that I did um, throughout my writing career, but my first book was actually this one. It's called I Am Not a Pirate, and it's about my daughter Maddie. So the main character's name is Maddie because I wrote it about her. And the inspiration for this book was because my daughter Madison has something called amblyopia. What that means is one of her eyes could see really well and the other one could not. And so in order to fix the problem, they have to put an eye patch. Here's one of her eye patches. They have to put an eye patch over her glasses and she would have to wear that over her good eye so that the brain would use her eye that was really weak and it would get stronger and stronger as it was being used. So she wasn't really thrilled about wearing an eye patch. I mean, can you imagine having to wear that all the time and you're wearing it over your good eye so everything you see is blurry? So she ended up wearing the patch for three years and she got through it with a sense of humor. And so that's what I'm Not a Pirate's all about. And I sent it in and they liked the story. And since then I've been able to share the story with all different countries um, because I'm part of some groups of parents that also have kids that um, had to wear an eye patch. So that's just been a really neat project. I even got to be on the news a couple times with Madison during Amblyopia Awareness Month. And so that was just a really special first book for me. Um, the next book that I wrote, is a kind of a fun one to say. It's Nick and Chuggets. And so Nick and Chuggets is full of something called spoonerisms. And spoonerisms are when you switch the beginnings of two words that are close together. So Nick and Chuggets, you know, it's really supposed to be chicken nuggets. Um, and have a dice nay is really have a nice day. But Cooper, he talks in spoonerisms. And it's not a speech impediment or anything. It's just a slip of the tongue that we all do occasionally. But I thought, how fun would it be if there was a character that always talked in spoonerisms? You know, kind of like some people like to talk in pig Latin for fun. And so the main character in the story talks in spoonerisms. So maybe you know some spoonerisms. Um, some of them that are in here are things like um, shulk make. So a shulk make would be a milkshake. And what about a dorn cog? A Dorn Cog would be a corn dog. A Splanana Bit would be a banana split. So there are all kinds of funny food words in here that are spoonerisms, and I just had a lot of fun playing with words, um, using some similes. Um, those are always fun. Instead of making a, a boring statement like, um, he was really confused, um, I used a simile and I said, he was as confused as a chameleon in a bucket of crayons. So I just had lots of fun with words in this book. And I just wrote this one, if you're, if you're studying author's, author's purpose, this one, my author's purpose was just to entertain you. So the next book that I did, let's see, I think this one came next. This was Vulture and Hummingbird. And this is a story about a really cranky, grumpy vulture and a happy hummingbird. And you can see he has a little list here and that's his happy list. So whenever something good happens or he brings happiness to someone, he likes to write it down to remember that. And Vulture just really wants to be left alone. But um, Hummingbird ends up not giving up. He perseveres and he ends up finally in the end winning Vulture over. And there's a really funny part in the middle when Vulture's complaining about his bald head and how cold he is. Um, I'll give you a little sneak peek of the picture. I love this. So Hummingbird likes to knit. And that's one of the things that he does for fun. So when Vulture's complaining about how cold he is, look at the hat that that hummingbird makes for him. Isn't that silly? And so, of course, Vulture's not very amused, but he eventually appreciates the hat. So another book I did, this is kind of for older kids. It's called Maggot Man, which is, um, it's really a science book. It's about maggots, which are... Um, the baby fly in the blowfly life cycle. So you know how butterflies, they change from, um, they're a caterpillar and then they turn into a chrysalis and then when they emerge from their chrysalis, they're a butterfly. Well, a baby blowfly starts out as a maggot and it goes into a pupera and then it comes out as a blowfly. And so it's how um, insect evidence, so when you find a maggot or a fly, um, that evidence can be used at crime scenes to solve crime. So that's why I made him kind of into this superhero. And I told it from the perspective of the maggot. So he's the one talking to you throughout the story and teaching you about how insects can actually help solve crimes. So it's kind of grossly fascinating. Um, but I wanted to do one um, that was a nonfiction and also one that was for older kids. Now my next book, this one I have to admit is probably my favorite. 
This one is called Penelope Perfect. And this is about a girl who is a perfectionist, which means she likes everything to be just right. And so she plans everything out. She has to-do lists and she has charts and she doesn't like to be late for anything and she likes to have everything go as planned. Well, one night there's a thunderstorm and the power goes off. And so, and her alarm clock doesn't go off because the power's out. So she wakes up late and she doesn't have time to, you know, get herself all dressed up and in matching clothes and do her hair or iron her, her sweater or anything. So she basically is a frazzled mess, has to go late to school, and her whole day she thinks is just going to be awful because it started out so terrible. But she ends up learning that it's, it's actually okay to go with the flow and that everything doesn't have to be perfect and it can still turn out okay. So that's Penelope. And then a book that's kind of the opposite is Coasting Casey. So Coasting Casey's kind of an underachiever. He really doesn't care if anything's perfect. But one cool thing about Casey is he loves music and art, anything where he can be creative. And so in school, he's bored, or I should say he thinks he's bored. But when he soon discovers how he can maybe use some music or use some art um, in his schoolwork and that everyone really loves it, that it makes school a lot of fun and it makes it really fun to do all the projects that he does. So Casey learns that, you know, coasting's not really a cool thing because we always wanna try our best, but one way we can th make things more fun is to um, put in those things that are fun to us when we're doing something that maybe isn't as fun. So that's coasting Casey. And I have all kinds of projects out right now on submission, which means I've written a whole bunch of stories and my agent has them right now and he is working on sending them out to different publishers and we're asking different publishers if they would like to make them into a book. Um, I actually just got home from a writing conference in Ohio this weekend and I'm hopeful that um, one of my books is going, one of my stories that I wrote is going to become a book. So I'm, I'm really hopeful to hear good news soon. Um, I wanna share with you too, one thing that I do as a writer is I keep notebooks and journals. I have all my diaries from when I was a kid, all the way from second grade, all the way up through college, and I still keep writing notebooks. So this is one of my well-used notebooks, and anytime I have an idea, I write it down. It might even just be an idea for a character's name. It might be an idea for a story. It might be an idea for um, a magazine article. Um, I mean, wherever I'm at, I try to write it down. So here you can see I have some notes on a napkin um, when I was at a restaurant one day. Here are some church bulletins that I took some notes on and kept because I didn't want to lose my thought when I had that idea. I have all kinds of just ripped off papers and I have post-it notes. Um, all kinds of things. And when I when I sit down to write, I will often go through these and try to see if some of these ideas will work in the story that I'm working on at the time. Or if I'm getting ready to just start a brand new project, it will maybe give me the idea for what I wanna make that story about. So as far as giving you some tips, if you're interested in writing too, one of the things I always tell people is um, make sure that if you enjoy writing and you want to be an author, that you read a lot of books. And that is some advice that a lot of people will give you if, um, if you ask them about how to start being an author. They'll tell you you need to read lots of books, especially the kind that you wanna write. So if you enjoy mysteries, then you should read mystery books. If you enjoy nonfiction things, you should read a lot of nonfiction books. Because as you're reading those things, you learn what different authors are doing, you get ideas, you see what the format looks like, and um, it just really prepares you for when you're getting ready to write. I know for me, when I get ready to write my favorite kind of book, which is a picture book, I usually know who the character is, what their problem's going to be, how they're gonna solve the problem, what the story's theme is. I might know all of those things, but so often, when I first sit down with that scary white blank page, which I really do start by writing, I don't put it on my computer first, but I have that blank page just staring at me, and that's the part where I get stuck. 
because I know what the whole story is going to be about, but I don't know how I want to start because, as you know, beginnings are really important. I want to hook my reader. I want them to keep reading. So what I'll do is I'll take a stack of my favorite picture books and I will just read the first page of each one. And as I'm reading those, then I start to realize, ooh, I like that idea. Oh, that's a cool idea. I could combine that with my character and setting. And then I think about all these beginnings and my brain's only thinking of beginnings and before I know it, I've come up with a beginning for my book. But the way I got that idea was through reading other books that were good examples for me. It also gives me good examples for grammar and how things should look and, you know, when we're just starting to learn how to use transition words and things like that, the books can be a great model for us so that we can improve our writing. And then my second tip is to write. You have to write a lot if you want to get better at it. It's just like if you want to be really good at basketball. You can't just show up for the games. You have to go to all the practices. And so when I go to shoot a basket, and I'm trying to get good at, at making free throws, let's say, so I go to shoot the basket, and or shoot the ball into the basket, and when I go to shoot it, let's say it doesn't even make it to the rim. It's a total air ball. And so what I, what I do is I learn from that mistake and I decide, okay, so now I need to either give it some more oomph with my arms or maybe I need to push off more with my legs and then I go and shoot it again. And then this time I shoot it, maybe it goes way over the backboard. I gave it too much power. And so then I have to decide, okay, so I've got to kind of do a little less of that, a little more of this, and then it'll be closer. And every time I practice and I shoot, I get a little closer. I might even make some, and I get better and better the more I practice. And it's the same thing with writing. It's just like if you're learning piano or you're learning gymnastics or you're um, learning violin, anything new that you're learning like that, the more you practice, the better you get at it, obviously. So writing is something that you need to do if you wanna become better at writing. Um, my third tip is to learn from others. So I just mentioned, I went to the Ohio Writing Conference this past weekend, and the reason I go to these conferences and I drive miles and miles and hours away to go to all of these conferences that I go to, I go to a whole bunch of conferences a year. Um, I go because I can learn. I get to become a writing student. Um, so I'm a teacher during the day for my real job, but I like to be a student and and learn more so that I can get better at writing so that more publishers will want my books because they're getting better and better. So it's really important to learn from others. Another thing that I do is I will ask fellow authors, friends, family members to read my writing and I'll ask them for tips. I'll say, you know, are there are there spots in this that don't make sense? Or when I read it aloud to them, if they don't laugh in the parts I was hoping were funny, then I know I need to tweak that. So I can get all kinds of advice from people, and that's also a good thing that you can do with your writing. You can share it with your friends, you can share it with family like I do, but you know what's really cool and why you're so lucky? Because you have writing every day at school and you can ask your teacher and she won't charge you anything. It's free for the asking. So you can go up to her and say, will you read my story or will you read my essay on this or will you read my letter and will you tell me does it make sense? Are there mistakes in there that I could make better? Your teacher will be thrilled to help you with that. They want you to improve your writing. So learn from others. That's another big tip. And the last tip I'll share with you is to never give up because... It can be kind of sad sometimes when you're a writer because you send off this work that you've poured your heart and soul into and you send it to a publisher and they say, no, thank you. And then you're like, oh, what? And so then you're really sad because you think, well, they don't like my story or and maybe it was just not a fit for their publishing house or maybe they already have a story just like that. But it also kind of hurts just a little bit. And so... You have to make sure that you, you stay strong and you stay tough. And just like when you miss that basket, you just have to keep practicing and you just keep improving it. And then maybe another publishing house will want it. Or, um, you know, when you get those rejection letters, you can read what they say and see if there's some free advice in there. And then they can um, maybe help you to see what you need to fix in your story specifically. So, like I said, my big tips are read a lot of books, especially the kind of books that you want to write. To write a lot and keep practicing, keep improving. To learn from other people because that's a great way to have other people's opinions because in the long run, that's who's going to be reading your books is other people. And then the last one is, of course, to never give up. 
So if you ever have any questions, I would be happy to answer them if you want to email me with my school address, which Mrs. Zandrick can give you, or you can write me an actual letter and she can send it over to Van and I would love to write back to you. So um, if you want to learn more about me, you can also go to my website. Um, I have some videos on there too. You could go to my writing cottage tour and see where I do my writing in the backyard. It was my kid's playhouse that I turned into my own writing cottage. So I have a video of that on there. I have some writing lessons on there too if you want to go on there and see how to write a good beginning or a good ending or do some poetry. Um, and I also have writing camps and poetry clubs and things that you guys can join. So if you love writing, um, and I hope you do, then you can do some of those things too. My website is www.shannonisteaching.com. So I would love it if you visited on there and check out some of the stuff. And you can see when I get new books come out, I'll put it on there. Um, but yeah, I know Mrs. Andrick said she just wants me to talk for 20 minutes and my timer is saying 20 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and go. It was great talking to you and do a lot of writing guys. Bye-bye.